Today, I'll take a look at two of the many different types of helper entities available in Home Assistant. Helpers can be used to enhance your automations and scripts and can even be shown on your dashboards. I'll cover how they are created both in the UI editor and in YAML and review the available properties and services of each type and then take a look at a few different sample automations showing you how you might use these helpers in your own Home Assistant installation. Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Today I want to talk about a couple of different types of helpers. Now helpers are entities that normally aren't created or brought in when you integrate a device, but instead they are things that you create manually that you can use in your automation, scripts, or even on your dashboards. And there are a couple of them that I find very useful and use in a lot of my automations, and that's what I'm going to cover today. I'm going to start out by talking about the input boolean or toggle helper. So I'll first show you how you can create an input boolean or a toggle. This can be done either through the UI or via YAML. I'm going to show both ways because there is, as of the time of this recording, an extra option that's only available if you do it via YAML. But to do it via the UI, we're going to go down here to our settings. We're going to come up here to devices and services where it lists helpers. We're going to go to our helper tab and we're going to create a helper. Now you see down here we have a toggle. If for some reason you see a message similar to this and toggle is grayed out and not available, that means it's probably because you've customized your configuration.yaml at some point and you don't have the input boolean integration listed. That's easy enough to fix. All we need to do is go back over here to our file editor and find and open your configuration.yaml file. Within your Home Assistant configuration.yaml file, you may see a lot of other stuff listed, but what you're looking for is input underscore boolean. If you don't find that anywhere in your file, just simply add that, followed by a colon, completely left justified, save your configuration.yaml file, and restart Home Assistant, and you'll find that the toggle is now available in the helpers. When you return to your helpers, toggle should be available, so we'll select that. We'll just give it a simple name here. I'll call this invoice notifications. And we can optionally select an icon if we like for that. And we simply create and that's all there is to it. To create an input Boolean in YAML, simply find your input Boolean integration header, which will be in your configuration.yaml file if you're using a single configuration, or it might be in your individual package files if you're using packages. For each input Boolean we want to create, we simply give it an entity ID name, a friendly name, optionally an icon, then there's this last property which currently isn't available in the UI editor, and that's an initial property. We can set this initial property to true, which means that this input boolean will be set to true anytime Home Assistant restarts. Now that might be handy for some of the examples I'm going to show where maybe I have my voice notifications disabled, but I want those to be re-enabled anytime Home Assistant restarts. So I can simply set this input boolean to true. Alternatively, you could set this initial value to false, and this input boolean would always be set to false or off anytime Home Assistant restarts. If you omit the initial property, then the input boolean will have the same value after the Home Assistant restart as it had before the restart. Let's take a quick look at the available states and services for input booleans or toggles. Now, in terms of state, an input boolean by the definition of boolean only has two states, off or on. Now, it could actually have a state of unavailable or unknown when you first create the input boolean before a state has actually been set. But once the state set, it will always be either off or on. As far as services, there are three services you can call. Turn the input boolean on, turn it off, or toggle it, which will just flip the state from off or on. So taking a look at how you might use these in your automations in terms of a trigger, you can look at the state of the input boolean when it switches from off to on or on to off and that can be your automation trigger. In terms of conditions, which is how I normally use the input booleans, we can look at the state of our particular input boolean and see whether it is off or on as a condition. And of course, we can use these in our action part of our automations as well by calling one of those services of turn on, turn off, or toggle. All right, let's take a look at how this actually works in Home Assistant. Once the input boolean or toggle is created, you can now use it in your automations as a condition. So I go into automations and create an automation. I go under my add conditions, I can look at the state of an entity. So in this case, the entity I'm going to look for is my voice notifications. So if I select that 
and I say I want the state to be on, then that means this automation will only run if my voice notification input boolean or toggle is turned on or is true. If it's false or turned off, then this automation will not run. And I can add this same condition to multiple automations. So in my case, for all of my voice notifications that I have throughout my automations, they all check to make sure that this voice notification input boolean is turned on. Now, in effect, on my dashboard, I've created a single button that when I toggle that, turns all of my different voice notifications off or turns them back on. Now, it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here, so let's go over here. Here is my master input boolean. When I flip that, notice that all these other ones turn off. Well, except this one, which stays on. When I turn them back on, they all come back on except for these two. Well, those are ones that I don't want to be part of this master voice notification system. I always want to control those manually. So those particular automations do not have that condition check added as part of their automation. In actual effect, all of these are individual input booleans as well. So each voice notification in my case has its own input boolean and that allows me to turn individual voice notifications off or on or again, I can turn them all off or on with a single switch. So let's take a look at how these multiple input booleans work in my case of my voice notifications. This is the automation for my washer notifications. Now it's done exactly the same way in the UI as it's done here. I happen to do them in YAML, but I've got my trigger that lets me know that the washer is finished. And then in my condition, you see that I am checking the input Boolean for my washer notifications and making sure it is on before it actually makes a voice announcement. So you might be asking, well, what about that master switch? Why isn't it checking that input Boolean? Well, it doesn't have to. If you remember, when I turn off the master voice notifications, it also turns off all these individual voice notifications. That's done through this automation. So anytime that, the, that my voice notification input Boolean goes from on to off, it turns off all of the individual voice notifications. It gives me the ability to turn each one off individually because it's only checking its own input Boolean, but yet to have an overall master voice notification switch that will turn them all off or on. We'll come back to input Booleans in a little bit when I show how they can even be more useful when combined with the other helper I'm going to talk about today, and that is the timer. Timers are created in much the same way as input booleans or toggles. Again, we can do it through the UI or via YAML. In the UI, we will go to our devices and services, our helpers, create helper, come down and find timer. Once again, if the timer is disabled or not available, that means you don't have the base integration in your custom configuration.yaml file. But once again, simply open up your configuration.yaml file, Come down here, add a line, and simply put timer with a colon, save it, restart Home Assistant, and then the timer helper will be available in the UI. Once your timer integration is there, we simply click that to add a new timer. We can give this a name. I'm gonna call this one my snooze for my voice notifications. We can optionally select an icon if we want. And then you have a couple of options in terms of duration. You can set a duration here, like let's say I wanna set this for 15 minutes. Then every time this timer is restarted, it'll set to 15 minutes. Or I can leave this at zero and I can set the duration as part of my automation. I generally tend to leave these at zero and set it in my automation, but either way will work. So we'll go ahead and say, we always want this timer to be 15 minutes. Then the last option here is restore. What that means is if this timer is actively running and Home Assistant restarts, it will update that timer. Basically, the timer will continue to run while Home Assistant restarts. So for example, if my timer was a minute and a half and 45 seconds in, Home Assistant restarted, and it took 30 seconds for Home Assistant to restart, once the restart was complete, this timer would automatically start and be at 15 seconds. If the timer expires during the time that Home Assistant restarts, then it would actually fire the timer finished event. We're gonna talk about the events and services for timers here in just a second. But if you want your timer to restore, you can check this box. If you don't, then the timer will always be reset back to the standard duration in a stopped state when you restart Home Assistant. On the YAML side, all of the same options are available here is through the UI in your configuration.yaml under your timer header or in a package, 
or if you have a split timer.yaml configuration file, you'll obviously omit this, but you give it an entity ID, a friendly name, optionally an icon, and whether you want this timer to be restored or not on a Home Assistant restart. So let's take a look at the states, services, and events related to timers. As far as a state, a timer either has an idle, active, or paused state. Obviously, active means it's running, idle it's not, or it's been paused. In terms of our services, we can call a start, we can call a pause, we can call a change, which we can add or remove time from an actively running timer. We can force the timer to finish early, or we can cancel the timer. So what's the difference between finish and cancel? Well, that has somewhat to do with the available events. An event will fire off anytime one of these things happens with a timer. Anytime it started, paused, restarted, or finished or canceled. That way we can determine the difference between a timer that finished versus a timer that's canceled. So that plays into our triggers for our automations. Now, of course, we can base a trigger off of state just like we did with the input Boolean. We can trigger off the fact that anytime that the timer goes from active to idle, it will fire off this automation. What we can't tell here is exactly how it went from active to idle. Did it just finish on its own? Was there a change made or was it canceled? Well, by using the event triggers, we actually are able to differentiate between whether a timer finished or whether a timer was canceled or through some other event of the timer. That allows us to actually run different automations based on the different events. There's one other advantage to events as well is they generally return additional data. So here's an example of data returned when a timer finishes. Notice that you also have in here the time that the event fired and the time that the event finished. And we can use that data either in our triggers or conditions of our automations. So how can you determine what data is returned by an event? Well, it's pretty easy. We'll go to our developer tools and we'll go over here to events and we will actually listen for an event. In this case, I'll do timer finished event and I'll start listening. At this point, what I will do is I will fire off a timer and then wait for it to finish. In this particular case, I fired off my Sterilite timer, which only runs for 15 seconds. So it should finish up here pretty quickly. And there it is. And so now we can see the type of data that is returned by a timer finished event and use that data in our automations. So let's take a look at just a couple of different ways that you might use timers in your automations. Here's a pretty simple but common example of using a timer. In this case, I'm controlling a light based on a motion sensor, which is probably something that a lot of you do. So in this case, I've got a motion sensor, and when it detects motion, it goes from off to on, so that's my trigger, and I turn on my light. Now the issue is here, if you're using something like a PIR sensor, and I know this isn't a big issue with the newer presence detectors, but if you're using a PIR sensor and you stop moving for just a second or two, that PIR sensor is going to turn back off and go from on to off, and if you use that to turn your lights off, it could turn the lights off while you're in the middle of the room and leave you in a dark room. So instead, when we turn the lights on, we're going to start a timer. And I set the duration of this timer for 45 seconds in my case. So this timer will start to run. And what will happen is if it detects motion again, this automation will fire once again and restart that timer to 45 seconds. Yes, if you run the timer start service while it's already running, it will basically do the same thing as a timer restart. Now to turn our lights off, instead of looking at that motion detector, we're going to watch this timer. And when this timer expires, by looking at the timer finished event, we're then going to turn the light off. So that means as long as motion continues to occur, that timer will continuously be reset and won't expire. It's only after there's not been any motion detected for 45 seconds will this automation fire and turn off the lights. Now there are lots of ways to improve this. There probably could be some conditions added in there as well. And there are a lot of other ways to use timers within Home Assistant. But this gives you a pretty basic example of one way that timers can be used. And timers can be really useful when we combine them with input booleans. If you remember back in our input boolean example, we were using an input boolean to disable a lot of automations. Now, the one problem with that is we've got to remember to go back and turn that input boolean back on again to re-enable those automations. Otherwise, they just remain off and will never run again. But by adding a timer, we can now use that timer to automatically re-enable that input boolean and our automations after a set time. So back on this dashboard where I have all my input booleans, you'll notice I've now added timers to a number of those. 
There are a couple of them that don't have, for example, my leak notifications. I have over a dozen or so leak detectors around the house. And if a leak is detected, I want to be notified day or night at any time. So I never want this turned off via automation. But for each of these timers, I call them a snooze timer because if I turn off a notification, it's going to start a two hour timer. After two hours expires, it's going to automatically turn that notification back on. I normally use these for taking an afternoon nap every now and then. But there's also, again, the master voice notifications that turns all these off and it starts its own timer. It's actually about five minutes longer. And so when this two hours expires, this input bullying will be turned back on, which in turn turns on all of the other voice notifications. So once again, I can snooze any particular notification for two hours or I can snooze all of my notifications for, well, in this case, two hours and five minutes. In this manner, each individual notification only has to have its own input Boolean and its own timer. And then the master takes care of dealing with all of the individual ones. Now you may have a situation where you want to base something like your voice notifications on a time of day as opposed to a countdown timer. And that's what I have down here with my voice night mode. And an automation at 11 p.m. every night will turn on my voice night mode. When it turns on, notice it turns off all of my other notifications through the master switch and it does start these timers so you might be asking what happens when these timers expire do these turn back on nope because what it's doing in the master notification is checking to see if this voice night mode is on if it is it's not going to turn on any of the other voice notifications so even though all of these timers expired none of the voice notifications got turned back on because the night mode is still enabled then what happens is at 7 a.m the next morning the voice night mode gets turned off automatically via automation. And after a short delay, all of these other voice notifications are automatically turned back on. So in this case, I'm actually doing it based on a time of day versus using some kind of countdown timer. There is one other type of example I want to at least mention here, even though it's not going to actually use timers, but it is another alternative, and that is setting your house into guest mode. So you might have visitors come over and certain automations you may want to disable, like maybe you've got a motion light in a guest bedroom that they're going to be staying in, so you don't want that automation to fire. Or maybe you've got additional automations you want to turn on for guests that might help them navigate your house. So again, using an input Boolean, we can toggle this guest mode on and when we do that we can build an automation that turns off certain automations and turns on others but again how do you have that automatically turn back on a time of day or a countdown timer may not work well we're going to use another type of input helper here which i'm really not going to cover we turn this on we can actually set a date and a time so we know our visitors are going to be leaving on the 31st let's say somewhere around 6 p.m we can simply set that as our date and time, and then we can use this as our trigger to turn our guest mode back off and re-enable or disable all the automations that we toggled while they were there. Of course, what I've shown here is definitely not the only way that you can use input Booleans, timers, and other helpers in Home Assistant in your own automations or on your own dashboards. These are just a few examples to maybe help you get started and to think about how you might use those in your own instance. So let me know if you saw anything in this video you liked or found helpful by hitting that thumbs up button. Click the subscribe button if you want to see more of my content and ding the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.